Hello, mind, brain, and behavior to people. Long time no see. Well, not all that long. I suppose I checked in briefly recently, didn't I? Hi, thanks for joining in. Everybody who's out there already, feel free to say hi or ask a question in the chat window. That's absolutely fine. Wow, I'm looking rough. I'm feeling rough. I uh, got a good dose of um, plane airport flu uh, on my last trip. Uh, thank you, Thomas. <clears throat> so uh, on the trip back from Europe to Australia, uh, I got a good dose of something, you know, some bug that I picked up. Um, so uh, I was having a bit of a recovery day today, but uh, I'm doing some work from home, which is nice. And of course, oh, I'm shaking my table. I shouldn't do that, should I? Why is that shaking? Is my laptop sitting on something? Um, and of course, I checked in from... Uh, my trip a couple of times and that trip was about attending some stigma conferences oh I'm glad that you can make a make the live stream snowy emu it's good to see you out there uh, and these stigma conferences were great they uh, gave me lots of food for thought I gave one two three four five presentations um, and about various work that we've been doing. Uh, I told uh, people all over the world about the Hearing Voices program that you guys did in uh, Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2, where we, of course, fashioned um, your experience around um, giving a voice to people with lived experience of mental health issues, in the curriculum, um, but then also shaped the assignments so that they plugged into that element of the coursework. And in that respect, your assignment was guiding your study. And obviously you've learned a lot about stigma about mental health issues this semester and probably more than um, you knew before, I imagine, given it was the focus, the assignment and so forth. Um, and really interesting to see, even in your assignment data, that we had some evidence there that uh, levels of stigma dropped after having been through the clinical course and the uh, Hearing Voices program. And of course, that was a pretty loose methodology, right? So you have to treat it, um, excuse me, I'm a bit sniffly, uh, treat it uh, with a grain of salt. However, um, hi, Yui Yuan, thanks for tuning in. Um, however, interestingly, uh, I had a couple of other stigma projects running this semester, uh, in the REP program. And for one of them, we've actually had to throw out all of the responses that we got this semester after, um, the semester started and after you all started doing your work on mental illness stigma and your work in the Hearing Voices program and visiting the DAC Centre and so forth, because it completely threw our results out. Everybody started responding in a different way about mental um, health problems and in regards to stigma um, to the way in which they had in semester one, and it made all of our results unreliable, basically. So we had to throw out the semester two results. We couldn't include them. So with that and a couple of other bits and pieces, looking at it uh, all together, it sounds, um, yeah, so that's a really good question, Thomas. So I suppose, yeah, I, I, I think I'm taking this as a, as a win. So when I think about the stigma study for mind, brain and behavior too, I suppose, you know, the hearing voices program, even though you know, there's still videos rolling out. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yes, there still are videos rolling out. Um, and that's a, it's a long process with some of the videos that are coming because um, 
It's not just a matter of me chopping up the video, editing it, and then publishing it. I go back to the person who I've videoed and uh, who I've interviewed, and I um, show them a draft, and then I wait for them to respond and get back to me and um, with any changes, and then I implement those changes, and then I go back to them. We do this up to three times before we have the finished product. So it has taken some time. We do, in theory, have a couple coming out this week. We'll see how we go. But yes, there are more coming. Believe it or not, there's over 10 more videos still to come. But when I think about the Hearing Voices um, program, incorporating the assignment, incorporating the visit to the DAC Centre, a beefed up piece around stigma generally in the uh, curriculum, uh, the, um, I suppose, increase awareness that I hope we've been able to give people about these really important issues and about um, organisations like SANE Australia and like the DAC Centre and how we're all working together on issues um, facing the community about mental health problems. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with where we've come this year. Anecdotally, I've received some really good feedback. You might recall that we did, of course, the final clinical lecture was a live streamed lecture from SANE headquarters with Sandy Jeffs, which we can think about under the banner of that Hearing Voices project. And um, I don't know about what you guys uh, think out there who are listening right now. Hello, Roy. Um, but I got some really good feedback about that um, live scream, live scream, very Halloween, live streamed lecture with Sandy and that people liked the opportunity to be able to ask questions and interact live. So we'll be looking to do more um, of that. But, um, <coughs> pardon me, it is a lot of work. It's really time consuming, but that's um, okay because it's very gratifying to think that, you know, on mass, I will say hi to you, Sienna, Veronica. Hello. Um, on mass, hopefully, you know, over a thousand people have started to think about mental health issues and stigma about mental health issues over the last few months in ways that they might not have before. And I hope that gives you some skills to move forward. Uh, you know, in life generally, and also, um, you know, maybe I've um, piqued the interest of some people in terms of future study or future work and so forth. Mushroom sauce, Charlie is around, but he's outside somewhere. I'll, I'll see if I can do something about that. See if I can get a Charlie delivery. Uh, yes, Acacia, you'll be able to see uh, more in the not too distant future. And yes, you'll still be able to access them once you finish the course. Yeah, Thomas, it's, um, and so and remember, this is just the first year. So over time, you know, my aim here is to, um, and this is one of the reasons why this was so appealing to SANE Australia oh. as well, is that together, we can, over time, hopefully, um, influence tens of thousands of students in terms of reducing stigma about mental illness over time. Um, as the years go on and the Hearing Voices program expands and um, hopefully that just leads to better outcomes, a more socially responsible graduate um workforce and so forth and uh, who knows what could what could come of it so uh, and certainly um, the reports from the same in Australia ambassadors Sandy and uh, the others have been really positive about their involvement with um, uh, with um, 
Oh, see, plane flew brain. I'm having a I'm I'm having a moment. What was I just thinking of? They've enjoyed being in 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 um, involved in the project, and it just received really um, favorable attention internationally when we were talking about it around the world. Uh, people thought it was great. So good on you all for uh, being my little test pilots uh, this year. And uh, I might, um, uh, I do actually plan to sometime over the next few weeks, ask you a couple of questions about um, your experience of the program to help me um, evaluate it. Snowy Emu, I'm glad that you found Changing Minds. It's a great series. Um, that's the brainchild of uh, a friend of mine, Mark Cross. Mark Cross is the psychiatrist um, who is in that program. And uh, he runs the um, facility there in Liverpool. And uh, Mark is actually a board member of SANE Australia. And um, if possible, oh, where are we? Is it this week we were going to catch up? Maybe this week or next week, I'm going to get Mark to join me in a live stream. Uh, at some point, we'll catch up and we'll do a live stream. And you could ask some questions uh, about the Changing Minds program if you wanted to. Um, keep an eye out for a new book from Mark, actually, uh, coming out oh, very soon. If it's not, it might already be out, actually. Uh, and it is um, about his experience of being a psychiatrist, but also having some real issues with anxiety and what it's like to work as a psychiatrist, as a professional in the mental health system, whilst also experiencing mental health problems himself. Really great book. Um, uh, a foreword by Georgie Harmon. Uh, and if you don't know Georgie Harmon, she's the CEO of Beyond Blue. And she talks about her experience of depression in the uh, foreword. Um, and I think actually there's something Magda Sabansky there talks about her experience of mental health issues. So he's got a few friends and colleagues in to lend support to the book. Keep an eye out for it. It's pretty good. I digress. We're 12 minutes into the stream. We've barely talked about anything except for the Hearing Voices program. Oh, dear. Um, yes. So let me ask you this question, actually. I've just been wondering about this. I think that by now you've probably got more of an idea of what SANE Australia does as an organisation and who they are. Did you know who they were before doing the Hearing Voices program or before you did Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2 this year? Or uh, let me rephrase that. Do you feel like you know more about SANE Australia than you did before you started Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2 this year? I'd be interested to hear about that. Oh, I've got stuff all over my jumper. Oh, no. All right, while you ponder that, I have a list of things that, thanks Acacia, okay. So that's good. That's, um, you know, whenever you have a partnership with organizations, you wanna make sure that you're um, really helping uh, every member of that partnership achieve some sort of them, some part of their mission. And certainly if I can uh, get over a thousand people every year to know a little bit more or, or to know something, if you hadn't even heard of them, thanks Lizzie, thanks Snowy and you, about SANE Australia, then that's great. A little bit of attention uh, raising is really good for organizations that provide support, right? Um, so, you know, if you're experiencing yourself mental health issues or your friend or family member is experiencing uh, some form of mental health problem, at least now you know there's one organization that you could, and there's multiple ones, Beyond Blue's another one, 
um, but there's uh, an organization there that you can steer people towards for support and help and so forth. Thanks, Devin. That's great. That's that's good to hear. <sighs> oh God, dearie me. I'm really hoping that I'm going to wake up tomorrow tomorrow morning and feel uh, miraculously fabulous. Ah. Um, so let's talk. Oh, I, I am Roy. Yes, as soon as I got back, don't you worry. I, I hit that health food section. Yeah, definitely. Um. Let's talk MBB2. So one of the things that I wanted to do in this live stream was talk with you all about the things that you need to tick off to successfully complete Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2 and talk about what you need to do if you're not in a position to tick things off per se. So let's go through these one by one. And... Um, I've made myself a little list here. So I wanted to talk about tutorial attendance, practical class attendance. You'd recall that you need to um, have attended 80% of the practical classes during semester. That means you could only miss two. You could have missed an excess one practical class with a medical certificate, um, but if you have missed more than two practical classes, um, generally speaking, without a medical certificate, then um, you will have fallen short of that hurdle requirement for passing the, the subject. However, don't worry, because there's a really easy fix. Um, and the fix is that at the, well, now we're at the end of the semester, we're in SWATVAC now, um, we will download the attendance data. Uh, we'll look at um, who has fallen short of the hurdle and we'll reach out to every one of those students and offer them an opportunity to make up that hurdle requirement by completing a short writing task. The writing task will relate to the work that you've missed in the tutorials that you have missed. So don't worry. If you fell short of the attendance hurdle requirement, it doesn't mean that you've failed the subject, but you must do the makeup writing task to be able to pass. If you don't do the makeup writing task, then you can't pass the subject. So this is um, a little get out of jail, not quite free, have to do some work. Um, but, um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, gives you an opportunity to solve that problem, and that'll be fine. So if, as I'm going through my little list here, you've got any questions about the things that I'm uh, talking about, please just throw them up there and I'll, I'll answer. So tutorial attendance, if you fell short, there's a writing task, we'll contact you about that very shortly, and you'll need to um, look at responding to that at your... Um, earliest um, uh, opportunity. Thank you very much, Christine, and that's lovely. Okay, REP, Research Experience Program. Uh, this, um, we extended the deadline, didn't we, to Friday, this coming Friday. So you've got until this coming Friday, which is, what's this Friday? Is it the first? Um, 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 yep, it's the first. It's almost my birthday. Oh my god. Um, so we've got until the end of Friday. Uh, thank you, Roy. Um, which is the first of November, and um, uh, you might recall that. The REP program involves being able to participate in research to gain up to 5% credit towards your mind, brain, and behavior to mark. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if you haven't done any 
by now, you might want to get on there and do some this week and get yourself some credit. Um, although getting all five credits, if you haven't even started at this point of semester, would be very difficult to do in the time that you have available. We understand that not everybody, not everybody wants to do this, but there's a free 5% there, or however many percent you do. So if you haven't done REP, make sure you get what you need to or want to get done by Friday, this Friday. And Christina asks, um, oh, you did some additional ones. Okay, well, you can certainly do additional ones. The maximum number of credits we can give is that 5%, but um, that's uh, really interesting, Christina, well done. And certainly if you want to learn and soak up that all of, I suppose the the knowledge and skills and experience that you can through that program then by all means participate in in some more go to town that's absolutely fine um what was i thinking some people accidentally clicked both mind brain and behavior one and two when they signed up for the rep this semester and have mistakenly thought that they needed to do 10 hours, not five. It's all just five, don't need to do 10. Uh, so five hours is all that you need to do. Five credits is the most that you can accrue towards your mind, brain and behavior to mark. Um, And that's about it for REP. So just to let you know what will happen um, in uh, a week's time, <coughs> excuse me, I will download the REP data and I will have it ready to sync with your assignment data and your exam data um, once you have sat the exam. Speaking of the exam, most people will be sitting it on the 18th, 18th of November, I think, off the top of my head. Um, not everybody sits in the same place or in the same session. So make sure you check your individual student timetable to find out precisely where you are going to be. And closer to the date, you'll also be able to find your seat number now, if you are sitting the exam at the main exam hall, then I will be there. I will uh, be there and Caitlin will come with me and we will uh, wander around with champagne and hors d'oeuvres or potentially just hang around and answer your questions while you're doing reading time uh, and get you settled in uh, in the Royal Exhibition Building, which is over near the museum. Um, so, of course, this is for the big main exam, uh, exam session. Some of you will not be sitting your exam there. Again, keep an eye on your individual student exam timetable. Um, Give you some champion. I don't know what that means. Oh, you mean like champignon? You want uh, a healthy order? Uh, okay, all right, yes, okay. Healthy orders, please. All right, I'll see what I can do. Um, yeah, let's see what time. Oh, it's early in the morning, isn't it, for most people? It's 8.30, so probably a little bit a little bit too early for, for champagne. Um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> I digress. It's a beautiful building, though. Um, uh, I do love the Royal Exhibition Building. I'm going to encourage you not to stress about this exam. It's 120 multiple choice questions. Um, it's never too early for champagne. Amen, Devin. You are speaking my language. Um, yeah, this is very true. Very true. <coughs> Pardon me. The exams are multiple choice, right? Um, and multiple choice 
exams are relatively okay to sit and prepare for, I think, because in theory, just by chance alone, you should be able to know nothing about the subject, turn up and get 25% roughly on the exam. Because there's four choices, you've got a 25% chance of getting a correct answer. So if you think about it in that way, you only need to do enough study to get you that other 25% to get you across the line into passing the exam. We're going to talk, this is not my last live stream, we're going to keep talking over the coming weeks leading through to 18 of November. And I'm going to be talking to you about how I would be preparing for the exam if I was you. <laughs> <Am I always? coughs> to clarify, am I saying always choose D? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Definitely. Or is it C? I thought it was C. So I have this golden rule that I share all the time, and I know I've shared it with you already, but it's really true. When you look at the number of lectures that there are in the subject, the number of examinable practical classes, um, there a really great way to start is to choose the two or three most important things from each lecture and plan on there being an exam question about those things. That's the way I would go about it. That will give you a very high probability of success, particularly if you are um, strapped for time. Um, that's a good way to go about it. So just to be clear, there's 25 questions from each lecture series. So 25 of mine from clinical, 25 of Abby's from developmental, 25 from Yoshi and social psychology, now, you know you've already got the social psychology exam questions, right? Did you know this? The questions that Yoshi has put on the LMS, so the 60 questions up there, the exam questions are coming from those. So if you didn't know that already, that's a thing. Yoshi's questions are up there on the LMS, and that's why he hasn't told you the answers, because they're the actual questions, some of them. Um, and I've been toing and froing, and I think I'm going to do the same for research methods. I'm going to release some questions to you very shortly, and some of them will be the real exam questions, and I'm not going to tell you what the answers are. You'll have to work it out for yourself. Ah. Well, Roy, that is a very good question. Or was Yoshi the first to do it? Yoshi has taught into mind, brain, and behavior one for over 20 years. Uh, two, I should say, for over 20 years. So Yoshi actually used to be the coordinator of mind, brain, and behavior two a long time ago. Uh, Thomas, it really varies. Um, people finish exams in um, in different ways uh, and in different paces. Uh, but my suggestion is that the three hours that's afforded is excessive. It's intentionally excessive to provide um, time for people who are studying in international languages, uh, where English is not their first language, to be able to sit the exam and have enough time to read it and complete it. And honestly, my hat goes off to everybody who is out there and studying in English, if English is a second language, because, wow, there's just nothing like international travel to, um, make uh remind you of, of, of how difficult it is to 
uh, live in a second language. Um, and if you're studying in a second language, then my goodness, um, good for you. I, um, I gave up at trying to speak any Czech uh, when I was in Prague uh, across the, I think I mentioned this last time, across the, um, the trip we worked out, we'd spoken um, a little uh, Chinese, uh, Spanish, Italian, Dutch. Um, that's probably about as far as I can go. Uh, and uh, I couldn't pick up any check. I just wasn't even going to try <laughs> by that point. Um, am I sick? Yes, Grace. I got some flu off the plane, unfortunately, but these things happen. Um, oh, there we go. So, Acacia, look at you with uh, some good advice. <coughs> That's so true. Checking everything can make you doubt yourself. But it is nice to have that that time, isn't it? That's right. Oh dear. Um, so we've got 120 questions. I said, didn't I? 25 from each lecture series, and then just 20 from research methods. As I said, I'm going to put some questions up on Canvas, and some of those are actually going to be the exam questions. Some won't, so I won't tell you what the answers are but you can work together to find uh, to find out what the answers are. Something like, of course, peer-wise is great to take you home to the exam from this point. Okay, so before we sort of get on to exam speak and study chat and so forth, and we'll do a lot of that over the coming weeks. The other thing to tie off, of course, is assignments. So we talked about um, the tutorial attendance hurdle requirement, tick, REP, tick, assignments. If you have not submitted one of the assignments as things stand, you can't complete the subject. You need to submit and complete assignment one and assignment two in order to be eligible to pass Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2. So if you found yourself at this point of the semester and just hoping that it will be okay without submitting an assignment. Unfortunately, um, no, that's not gonna be a thing, but there are solutions. So if you haven't submitted one of the assignments or both of the assignments, please go to your student portal and read about special consideration. Lodge an application for special consideration, which will come to me and then we can work together to find a solution for your predicament. Um, but uh, one must complete the assignments or equivalent to the uh, assignments in order to be able to pass a subject. So can't emphasize it enough. If you haven't completed your assignment and submitted your assignment and received your mark back by now, then please. <coughs> get in contact with me, submit that application for special consideration, and we'll see how we can solve uh, the problem. And please do this as soon as possible. Do not leave this any later than now. Um, so I think that's about it and things that we need, in terms of things that we need to tick off. Um, there's a whole other bit I wanted to do about looking after yourself um, as we move towards the uh, exam. But I'm also very mindful that, I don't know if you can hear, I'm starting to sort of get a bit cloggy in my voice. And uh, I don't know how much more of this I have in me. <laughs> Excuse me. I do have a great resource that I want to share with you. In fact, I've got a couple of great resources that I went, I've been hunting around um, ahead of speaking with you today. Um, and I wanted to share with you some links to um, information and um, suggestions and support services that 
the university and the wellbeing services group uh, have produced to support students as we get into exam time. Now, let me see if I can link this down here. Yeah, this is a great one. So I've just posted in the chat window there. Um, see if that link will work for you. I hope it will. Um, a link to uh, a um, tips page that is put out by the wellbeing group here at the university, uh, which talks about really practical things that you can do to look after yourself en route to exams. And so many of them are just straightforward, um, but they are so uh, very valuable. Things like making sure you're eating healthy food and eating regularly, that you're getting good regular sleep. Think back to my clinical section of the subject and we talked about the importance of, excuse me, good regular sleep for buffering experiences like depression, for example. Uh, activity, staying active, staying social, planning and preparing. This is such an important thing. So rather than waiting to the last second and realizing that you have to cram, <coughs> sorry, for multiple exams all at once, now's the time to really plan your time through to the end of your exams. And not only plan your time so that you have got um, time to um, study for everything, but you want balance if you're going to function as well as you can for the exam. And just as the exam is only one component of your life, right? So if you're going to function as well as you can generally, in your life over the next month or so, you want to achieve balance. And that's balance between the work and the non-work aspects of your life. So think about in your scheduling, actually scheduling time for relaxation, scheduling time for time out. <coughs> oh dear, the voice is going. Um, to do some exercise. Uh, so as sick as I feel today, uh, today was actually the first day since I've been back that I felt good enough to take Charlie for a walk. And I got up this morning and we went for a walk and Charlie had a great time. And I felt good for a little while after that. Uh, I feel a bit rough right now, but um, uh, a walk and a walk in nature especially is really very good, can actually be very useful for breaking ruminative thought patterns uh, as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's a whole lot of suggestions on there uh, and some links to where to ask about help. Now, here is another um, link that I will share with you from the uh, Student Wellbeing Services uh, webpage about looking after yourself en route to exams. And I'll post this uh, and I've got a bunch of more resources that I've been gathering together and curating for you all to share with you uh, over the coming weeks as we head towards exams. Oh, you already submitted a take-home essay. Nice, Christina. Well done. Congrats on getting that off your plate. That's excellent. Nothing like having, uh, being able to tick things off, is there? That's so great. Mm. Speaking of ticking things off, uh, on Friday, we launched my um, National uh, Stigma Report Card uh, research project, the Our Turn to Speak survey, the biggest survey there's ever been of um, uh, stigma and discrimination for people with complex mental health issues in Australia. It's now live. Um, we are just getting the 1800 number hopefully set up today. And uh, as soon as that is set up, then you'll see a bunch of fanfare. Uh, so keep your eye out on social media, on Twitter, and whatnot. As uh, the University, St. Australia, all of our partner organisations 
actually over 700 partner organizations across the country we've recruited <coughs> celebrities and so forth get behind this research project which is just such a uh, a meaningful big project and uh, people around the world are excited to to hear about what we find um, so uh, keep your eye out for that that's just uh, gone live on Friday um, a few people have found it over the weekend and completed it uh, and uh, I'll be um, no doubt able to share some preliminary findings with you in due course flip fly tumble random <coughs> so random but did you hear watch <coughs> Uh, about the Joker movie. Um, I have uh, heard um, oh, dog cuddles. Yes, everybody loves dog cuddles. Um, I have heard controversy, I suppose, around the Joker movie. So on, on, on one hand, I've heard... Um, I've not seen it yet, so I should preface this by saying I've not seen the movie yet. I look forward to seeing it. Uh, on one hand, um, I have heard or have read a story arguing that it was a misleading representation of mental health issues and could be stigmatizing. On the other hand, uh, I've also read an article that's argued that it is a story about uh, a response to trauma and poverty and adversity and what modern society can do to people uh, in a very real way. So I don't know. I don't know what to say about it at this point in time. I'm, I'm quite intrigued. I think I'm looking forward to, to seeing it. Yeah, that's right. Don't beat yourself up when you have a bad day study-wise. Everybody has them. That's right. Absolutely. Pick yourself up the next day. Great advice, Acacia. <coughs> yeah, it's been a uh, snowy. It's been a, a long time coming. Well, actually, not such a long time coming, the, the, the survey. It's just... Um, been um, probably the most intense uh, development period uh, of um, a research project that I've ever been involved in. We started work on it in March, and we've now got the website running, the survey running, everything is good to go. And um, it has been uh, intense. It has been a lot of work, but now we're we're ready, participants are, are trickling in, and we, in theory, will recruit um, 7,000 people with severe and complex mental health uh, issues uh, between now and Christmas. Uh, but we can certainly extend the recruitment period if needed. But um, uh, one of the things I'm doing as well is on the days where I'm not at uni over the next couple of months, we'll be flying around the country and interviewing people face to face. Um, so, Jessica, one, that's a really good question. Um, One thing I try to do is try not to answer questions for the other lecturers. So moving towards the exam, we'll make sure that the, I'll make sure that the lecturers are checking in on Canvas uh, in their threads so that you can ask them questions there. But I don't want to, I suppose, um, give a misleading or incorrect answer to one of their topic areas that I think I know the answer to. Um, of course, we will be, in, in fact, we'll have some live stream consultation sessions that are just focused on research methods and just focused on clinical psychology. And so I'm happy to do that with you. The others will probably answer uh, you via the um, discussion board, and that's fine. So what I'd suggest is that you post that on the discussion board in the developmental section for Abby, and Abby will be more than happy to uh, help you out and give you the answer. Or 
if anybody else wants to discuss the answer up there on the discussion board as well, you can also do that too. Yeah, flip fly tumble. It's a. I, I feel like I'm going to not know what to think at the end of the the movie as well. I'm already torn about. <coughs> pardon me. About um, in particular creative works and representations of um, mental illness. And on one hand. Um, you know, um, part of me would think that creative creativity shouldn't be constrained. And on the other hand, we know that creative works um, do have implications for the general public about mental health issues. So um, we know that the way in which you talk about suicide, for example, can influence whether or not people are likely to copycat suicide, the, the protagonist in your story, for example. There's a recipe um, for um, uh, avoiding uh, triggering phenomena like what's called the Werther effect. And the Werther effect is an effect that we see when a celebrity or a fictional character um, dies by suicide, um, we will find that if certain details are available, that um, people who might identify with that character or with that celebrity um, may go through a process of considering what's happened to that celebrity with all of their resources or to that character with all of their resources and that this person identifies with that that character, that protagonist, that celebrity um, has perceivably fewer resources. Uh, it seems to lead towards suicidal behaviour. I did a study on this, um, a very brief one, um, but just an opportunistic one about 10 years ago when I was directing uh, the, uh, well, there was a few telephone counselling lines. You guys know I used to do this. Um, but it was when, um, oh, God, what was her name? British singer, um, uh, female singer died by suicide about 10 years ago, who am I thinking of? Amy Winehouse, thank you. It was when Amy Winehouse died, uh, I immediately threw out um, a little survey to all the people that were working on Suicide Line Victoria, the suicide callback service that operates nationally, the Beyond Blue info line and so forth. And we found a spike in callers who were presenting with suicide risk and identifying with Amy Winehouse and naming Amy Winehouse as part of the, the sort of um, collection of factors and they're passing the collection of factors that would lead up to the person presenting to the telephone uh, service with thoughts of taking their own life. Um, so it's a really interesting phenomenon, this, this Werther effect. Uh, and... Um, there are actually strict, well, not strict, but there are guidelines. There's best practice guidelines for how to talk about um, suicide, how to talk about mental health issues generally in news. Uh, reporting in Australia, it's governed by what's called the Mind Frame Guidelines. You can look those up if you're interested. Um, uh, hey, Fiona. Um, Thanks for tuning in. I was, I don't, did you know that I was just in the Shepparton area recently um, and gave a talk up there? Um, so if you're interested in having a look at those media reporting guidelines, they're called Mindframe. Mindframe is the, the place to look. Um, and 
I suppose it's it's far more straightforward with news reporting. We know how news reporting affects stigma about schizophrenia, for example. One of my PhD students is fleshing this out experimentally right now. Um, again, with creative works. Oh, God, I'm so torn. I don't know what's right uh, with creative works, but certainly we know how to, certainly with written creative works, set those creative works up such that they're safe particularly if suicide is a theme. <coughs> oh. well, one of the common things that you'll see with the mind frame guidelines and these influence news reports generally about anything mental health related in Australia is that any um, news report that touches on mental health problems or on um, suicide should contain at least two referrals to a support service. If it's on television, it's generally one referral to a counselling line like Lifeline. So if you ever see, for example, I don't know, the, the project um, at 7 p.m. do their, do a story on something mental health related, keep an eye out and see if at the end of the section they mention um, something about um, contacting Lifeline if, you know, the story has brought anything up for you. And we're just so lucky uh, in Australia Every time I travel internationally and conference internationally, I'm reminded of this, just how lucky we are with the mental health system that we have. I know our mental health system is really under-resourced. It is. I testified to this fact in the Royal Commission into the, uh, the Victorian mental health system this year. But relatively speaking, when you look at what's happening internationally, oh, my God. Uh, I went to an amazing talk um, recently that was talking about a destigmatization program in um, to help just regular GPs, regular doctors reduce stigma about um, people with mental health issues and to increase their capacity to help people with mental health issues. This is in Suriname. And the reason why the general doctors had been targeted is because in the entire country um, of Suriname, there is, how many psychiatrists do you think in the entire country? One, one psychiatrist in the entire country. Yeah, so um, one needs, Right, so one needs to get creative then with how you start to meet the need. And this is certainly the case really broadly. Yeah, it's, it's and the sad thing is it's not uncommon. So a lot of the work that this Global Anti-Stigma Alliance that I'm part of does is looking at how we can increase the capacity of mental health services um, and decrease stigma about mental health issues in um, developing countries where there is not a lot of money uh, and where there are not really well-established health and mental health systems. Um, yeah, 13 reasons why um, bullying and suicide. Yeah, that's a pretty... Um, Full-on show, I would say. Uh, I am I <coughs> have mixed feelings about it. I think there's some things that they did really well, and I think there's some things that could have been done better. But started a dialogue. That's that's for sure. Uh, so, F Fiona, seeing you're not a student, if you um, if you're out there on social media, just follow me. At uh, I'm easy to find at 
what am I, at Dr. Chris Groot? Is that what I am on Twitter? I think that's what I am. Um, follow me on Twitter and uh, uh, I'm always uh, happy to talk, um, particularly about rural uh, experiences and complex mental health issues. Um, so again, we were up there recently um, doing a, a presentation in Shepparton, and this was myself and um, Dr. Michelle Blanchard, who's the deputy CEO of SANE, and Georgie Harmon, who's the CEO of Beyond Blue, and Abdullah Naveed, who is um, a local community worker, works with the Afghan um, community uh, with health and mental health. And, oh, God, I'm so bad with names. Another gentleman who works with young Indigenous youth uh, and mental health. Oh, God, I'm so bad with names. Um, let me find the link for us right now. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> All right, bear with me here. Oh, that's not working. Oh, what's going on here? Why can I not see this? Um, hmm. I'll find it at some point, uh, and, uh, I wonder if we've taken that down. Um, I'm sure I would have thrown it up on my Twitter at some point or something like that. Um, let's have a little look here. Give me two seconds. Uh, Oh, I can find Osha talking about it. God, is it just me or good old Osha's everywhere at the moment? Um, oh, that is us. Okay, there it is. Um, So where is the video? Ah, oh, well, I can't find it. I'll find it for you at some point. And, uh, oh, here it is. Okay. Oh, no, no, it's not. <sighs> this is all out of whack. Huh. I'll share it with you at another time. Okay. Any last questions you wanted to ask before I go and, uh, gosh, if I felt up to it, I'd go and get a haircut. Look at me. I'm all bushy. I'm like a bushman. Oh, Charlie will definitely do a day before chill stream. Yes. Charlie loves to, uh, to uh, serve the MBB community. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is not our last live stream. I'll be checking in with you every week, like leading up to the exam. 
It's only Monday. I'll probably get the the itch to live stream again before the end of the week. <coughs> uh. Uh, so yes, you will be seeing me, uh, a lot more before, um, uh, the end of the, um, semester. Um, let me see. Yeah. So Charlie, Charlie will make an appearance. I promise. Emerging Minds. No, I haven't heard about Emerging Minds. April, tell us about that. Well, Devin, I like to think that Charlie should be an emotional support dog for Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2 students. And I would bring him to the exam under that um, banner. However, we're all very aware of what Charlie did uh, in the lecture theatre that time, aren't we? So um, we can't have that. <coughs> uh, we can't have that happening in the exam. He likes to give. <laughs> he does. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh... Yes. One, uh, Charlie would be more than happy to accommodate the one cuddle per student. He, he's quite happy to give two cuddles, I'm sure. He's very cuddly. Oh, that sounds really great, April. Feel free to share the link to your film if you've... Oh, okay. Well, um, when you've got it, feel free to uh, send it to me and I'll uh, help you uh, share it around. Okay. So I think that might be where we leave it for today. So we covered off, off the main things that we needed to talk about, didn't we? The tutorial attendance, the REP, the assignments. Ultimately, I suppose the take home message was if there's something that you haven't done at this point with semester over, contact me and we'll sort it out. Oh no, oh, that's good. I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your dogs there, Devin, that's sad. Thank you, Flip Fly Tumble. We will line Charlie up for the next stream then, I promise. Okay, everyone, I will be in contact with you very shortly. Thanks for tuning in and for asking your questions and interacting. It's always great to see you out there. And I will see you again soon. Thanks, Roy, Thomas, Snowy, everyone. Okay, take care. I'll see you soon. Bye now.